Weezy out of here. The dash a digi, the schedule busy. My head in a hoodie, my shorty a goodie. My cousins are crazy, my cousins like boogie. Life is amazing, it is what it should be. Been here for ten, but I feel like a rookie. I tell her. Look yes. All right. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So, to get started on that, I'm first gonna see, you know, your work as a photographer and as a filmmaker and a producer. Kind of what brought you to the work you're doing now? What was your journey? <laughs> okay, I love telling my journey because it was uh, so um, interesting and um, and I didn't think it would happen this way, which is similar to a lot of people's journeys. Um, I did not think I would be in like a filmmaker or a photographer when I was younger. I had dreams of being a doctor. And so the way I got into filmmaking was... Um, when I was at Baylor University. I was pre-med and I, I said, you know what, I'm gonna go to medical school. As I was at Baylor, I ended up changing my major and decided I didn't wanna go to medical school anymore. And so I, I switched to international studies and then I started thinking I wanted to do nutrition, but it was too late to change to nutrition. So I started taking nutrition classes. And while I was there, um, uh, t starting to take nutrition classes, I, I would work in this after school program teaching kids how to make like healthy snacks. Um, and so I thought it would be really cool to um, create some type of show to teach kids how to make healthy snacks. I thought that would be a good medium, using media as a way to connect with kids. I thought that would be more um, in, in, intriguing and engage, like a, a more interactive experience. Um, and so I started thinking of Sesame Street. And so, it was my senior year at uh, Baylor University, and um, I remember thinking, this is crazy. How am I going to do a children's TV show? I have no background in film. And I remember calling my mom that same night, and um, I said, Mom, I want to create this children's show and teach kids about nutrition, and I want to be on PBS and blah, blah, blah. And I was so nervous and scared to tell her because I thought she'd be like, what in the world? Like, I mean, what are you talking about? But instead, my mom was like, do it. Yeah, she was like, you can do it. That sounds awesome. And I wonder, back then, I'm wondering if she like really thought that or she was just being nice. <laughs> but the fact that she said do it, right. it inspired me. So when I got off the phone, I just felt like this energy and like this like powerful, like just spiritual. I just felt like I was on fire. And so I started writing the script to Fumi and Friends. And... Um, after I graduated from Baylor, I went to um, I, I just like I went to Craigslist and found different um, like uh, puppeteers. I found puppet makers. I found actors. I found um, a camera guy. I found all these people, and I was really scared. I didn't know how it was going to turn out, but it ended up I ended up figuring it out and moving forward. So that's how it started, and from then I just fell in love with film. That's really an inspiring story, right? Because it's like you said, it talks about how you know you're doing one thing that kind of leads you. Mm -hmm your destiny. Mm -hmm. So let's get into one of the things that I, I noticed about you that I'm really impressed by is this way in which your identity moves through a lot of your work, mm -hmm. and especially um, as, an, as an Austinite mm -hmm. and being really kind of aware of the things that are happening in the changes in Austin. So if you could talk some about how your work is connected to that. Um, and I know you also do some other, it seems like you've done some like video directing mm -hmm. with folks that are local Austin mm -hmm. nights and you know, a lot of your work centers around the city. Mm -hmm. So if you could talk about that, that would be great. Yeah. Um, so I grew up here in Austin. I was, uh, we lived um, in South Austin, but my dad has, and still has a business here in East Austin. Uh, he's an accountant. And my mom had a nonprofit, Outreach Productions, or still has a nonprofit, which operated a lot in East Austin. And so uh, as a child, I was always in East Austin. And um, I just remember just loving being in East Austin, always at Oak Springs Library, which is now called Willie Mae Kirk Library, I believe, always at Givens, um, always at the pharmacy, Hillside Pharmacy, which used to be the place where my mom operated her uh, nonprofit and would teach children like um, literacy, uh, different literacy, um, I don't know the word, programming um, <laughs> to increase literacy <laughs> and um, plays and all that. And so as I got older and got into film, um, 
that's been with me, like being in East Austin and black people in our experiences have followed me. And so my short film, No Sleep, No Breaks, which I shot uh, January 2017, is um, about two East Austin music musicians who um, are trying to manifest their dreams to become recording artists. And it, we purposely shot at places in East Austin that meant a lot to us, like um, Givens, and we shot at the, the Victory Grill, and we shot near uh, Booker T. Washington. Um, and um, it's such a heartfelt film, and it's just, you know, our, our lives and our experiences as growing up in East Austin, and um, we just, as East Austin is changing, Right. It's important for us, for me and for my friends and our an artist to document what East Austin used to look like and still looks like, and so before it completely like changes, hopefully it doesn't. But as we just, we're seeing the changes now. Right. So the work around art is cool is connected to that as well. Mm -hmm. Um. Are the photo series. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So just recently, I um, released my photo series this past Monday called East Austin Like I Knew It To Be. Oh, okay. And it's a black and white photo series and it documents the different, um, it docu well, it documents different people in the East Austin. And um, it's basically what the series, the title speaks for itself. It's, uh, it's what East Austin used to look like to me or used to be to me. And it, it's like seeing black people in front of their homes, playing around. Um, just black people having fun, living life, working, doing art, eating, just being themselves, but just being the heart of East Austin and all over the place. Like everywhere you'd go, you know, you'd see black people. Now it's like dwindling down. Right. So that series is on my website, my Instagram, Art is Cool, at Art is Cool series on IG. So Art is Cool is like the umbrella for these different mm -hmm. projects. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. and I know a couple of years ago was that one that you did for Juneteenth, right? Mm -hmm. It was featuring mm -hmm. different artists. Yes, uh-huh. Right? photographers with their work yeah mm -hmm. yeah we um do live art shows as well and, and i like to showcase different artists of color and women right. so again you know it's i have to reiterate what your this work you're doing the importance of it um i, I have found and many people have found like this idea of the archive the living archive how important that is especially now because of the way we see you know east austin changing and you know, looking at some of these other communities in Austin and how they've disappeared, how important, you know, this archive work is. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, again, kind of reiterate what you're doing is really helpful, you know, yeah. to us kind of keeping, right, part yeah. of this legacy. Yeah, you know? thank you, yeah. yeah. I love going to Austin History Center and seeing, like, old pictures of <laughs> East Austin events and right. Juneteenth parades. It's really, I'm great, like, that there's a lot documented. Absolutely. So let's get into the filmmaking mm -hmm. hat as well. Mm -hmm. And I know that these inform each other. I know that it's not kind of like a compartmentalized, right? Your mm -hmm. work as a photographer, you know, definitely informs your work mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. filmmaker. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. kind of, I guess, talk more about the role of the filmmaking piece. Okay. Um, especially, you know, the, the guess who's coming to dinner okay and then moving into your recent web series yeah um so guess who's coming to dinner i shot in 2014 um with some um amazing uh, people who helped out which was um cindy elizabeth hakim adewumi tope iletu um they uh, helped out as producers for the film, but I, um, that was my first short film. So, you know, I had my children's TV, children's show that I was doing, but I was ready to move on from that. Okay. And I was ready to do like just some um, narrative, like a film work. And so I said, you know what, I want to do a feature film, but let, let me start first. I need to figure out how to do a film. So let me start with a short film. And so I, I wrote Guess Who's Coming to Dinner um, during a time after Beyonce's album. Like, I, I remember watching Beyonce's um, video, all the videos to her album. I forgot which album I was it was. say, which one? It yeah, was like, like <laughs> the, uh, it was 
before Lemonade, oh, I guess it was in like 2014. I can't remember the name of it. Be high, don't come after But but I remember, I remember yeah, watching. I know which album you're talking about. Yeah, I just don't know the name. But I just remember like listening to it and watch the fact that she had a video for every song. Oh, I just yes, was like, yes. what mm -hmm. in the world? This is crazy. So I just felt like on a high. And I was just like, Beyonce is just inspiring me so much. And like, I just remember writing down, writing the film, the script, and then I sent it to my fr the producers, and I sent it to my mom, and she like looked over it and gave feedback. And um, yeah, that, that film, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, is a twist on the original film with uh, Sidney Poitier, if I said that right. And um, it's basically about a Nigerian-American woman brings home her significant other to uh, thanks to dinner, to Thanksgiving dinner, and she's uh, surprised by, or she's not surprised, her parents are kind of surprised, her parents, Lord, her, <laughs> it's been a while, her mom is surprised, and it's just kind of like a little suspenseful short film, um, and um, yeah, that kicked it off, um, and I, it was important to me that, you know, I include the Nigerian aspect right. because my dad is Nigerian. My mom is African-American from Detroit. Oh, right. um, yeah. And so we got the Nigeria and we got the Detroit right. in the house. Definitely. And I've started to see more. One of the, I think, benefits of social media is, you know, I feel like for a while there's been this kind of void mm -hmm. around knowledge of you know, the black diaspora, right, and the continent, and the ways in which African Americans, in my opinion, have, we've had some limited kind of <laughs> information or knowledge of, you know, our cousins and folks all mm -hmm, over, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I've noticed in the last um, couple of years, like a lot of folks, you know, being Nigerian American or, you know, mm -hmm. from the diaspora or whatever parts of the continent you're from, like your, those experiences with these dualities, these dual identities, mm -hmm. and, you know, in relation to African Americans, like, it's great kind of seeing us kind of coming more to the mm -hmm. Um, So, oh, sure, we're doing things. <laughs> we're live. Okay, we're live. <laughs> See, when you hang with Fumi, she did her own publicity. She created we're a flyer. <laughs> she came in with a video camera. We're live. You know, I'm, I'm like, she's stepping the game up. <laughs> Got to. Yeah, so... All of that basically being said, um, which is why I can't wait to talk about Inanaka. Yeah, Driver, yeah. So I have to say I've watched several of them. I think I pretty much through the first season, mm -hmm. and it's hilarious. And Thank so can you. you please talk a little, tell a description, and name these really amazing and hilarious um, actors. Okay. Or, yeah. Of yeah. course. <laughs> um, <sighs> Neck of the Uber Driver is so special to me. Um, I first started it back in a couple years back, uh, 2016, I believe. I was an Uber driver. I was working full time at Rodriguez Elementary. Shout out to Rodriguez Elementary. I was there four years as the after school director, uh, enrichment program director. And I wanted to make some extra cash to buy film equipment. And so um, I uh, decided to Uber, and um, I, I remember the first, I just had a lot of like interesting stories being a black woman in Austin Ubering. <laughs> I just remember I would pick up a bunch of like people who would like, it was just wild like picking up people downtown, and it was just funny, and then people like asking me about my name, or people getting in the car and asking me to rap, because I was like black, so they're like, they'd be drunk, and they'd be like, hey, you know, can you rap or do a freestyle? And I was like, what? And so it was just a lot of different stories, and so I would go on Facebook and write about some of these stories, and I remember Yaki Smith, shout out to Yaki Smith, who is an amazing filmmaker, he's also a professor at UT, um, and he's like, a uh, very inspirational for me. But I remember he saw my Facebook status and commented, hey, you should make this into a web series. And I met, uh, during that time, I met Niclet Izuebu, mm -hmm. who plays NECA. Mm -hmm. uh, Niclet and I had met and we decided we wanted to work on something together, but we didn't know why. So when I, I told her about this idea of NECA the Uber driver, she was like on it. She, um, she she's the the writer the heart of it she writes it all out we co we collaborate with ideas and we and then she writes it out so she's an amazing actress and writer and um, I and I told her about NECA the Uber driver I gave her an idea and she fleshed it out and she came up with the name NECA 
Um, and uh, ever since then, we I remember we released our first, we call it a pilot episode um, in, I think it was March 2016, and it went viral. Like, we got over 200,000 views, and that's when we knew, like, ooh, we should do this. So we did season one, and now we have season one and a half done, which is up. <laughs> it just, like, our last video of the season, season one and a half just posted. And um, I didn't even give the synopsis about what it was about, but... Should I just real quick just say? Yeah, and then maybe we can just talk about one, a bit of one of the episodes. Because okay. Because as you were talking about your, you know, some of your stories as an Uber driver, I'm like, oh, I remember that from one of the episodes. Yeah, right? so yeah. So it's really, a lot of that is pulled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, okay, so Neka the Uber Driver is basically a web series about a Nigerian girl named Neka who's first generation born in Houston, Texas, and she went to Harvard University, and um, her, she had plans to go to medical school, but she realized she didn't want to do that, and she decided to be an Uber driver, and she loves being an Uber driver, and it influences her writing because she's truly a writer. So her, the stories influence her, her, her writing and her, her future book that's coming out. Her mom is very upset that her daughter is an Uber driver. So it's a bit, so it's just very like the mom is praying a lot. Yeah. And as far as truth, it the stories, um, you know, it's fiction, but it's it's based off like real life experiences. Like Nicolette, the writer, uh, I mean the actress, the producer, she. Um, did go to Harvard and she did get accepted to medical school, but she's her passion is acting and writing, and um, so that's her, her that's her story that's tied into Neck of the Uber Driver, and some of the episodes, I remember we tried to do the my very first true life Uber ride. I picked up these three boys who got in the car and were just like four boys who were just wild and had, were underage, um, showed me their fake IDs and some other stuff. Um, we couldn't find anybody for that episode. We still might shoot it because <laughs> we needed some like obnoxious frat boys and we couldn't find like four guys to play. I know it's, we should be able to in Austin. No tea, no shade. But, um, <laughs> but I'm trying to think of specific episodes, but now it's like. Oh, I know. I can tell you some. I mean, so there's so many really, I mean, because you all deal with so many things like, um, mm -hmm. You know the relationship with Neka and her, you know, siblings or twins. Yeah. Um, the mother is like this ominous. I think it's just mommy. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Name that kind of you just hear her voice. Yeah. Um, and one that really, um, I, I think one of the last ones I saw is with um, I don't know, I don't remember the character's name, but it's Evelyn. Evelyn, yeah, and, and Tabitha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tabitha, yeah. Right? yeah. And she and Neka are kind of having this, the East-West. Yes, um, frenemies. She's Kenyan, mm -hmm. and she's Nigerian uh -huh. people, and having this conversation, like, yeah. you know, was with the flat. Can you talk about that? I'm just probably butchering it. They yeah, were, yeah. You <laughs> no, you're very, <laughs> it's, you're good. Yeah, um, <laughs> East versus West is mm -hmm. an episode um, starring uh, Nicolette, Neka, and Evelyn from the Internet, who plays Tabitha, and basically, Tabitha and Neka are frenemies, mm. and so they're friends, but sometimes they get together and they just, you know, have like a little competition, um, and so East versus West is so funny because um, we, um, it's like we wrote, we wrote down what was going to happen, but a lot of it was them improvising, and they're just amazing at uh, improvising, they like are. they're just... They're <laughs> awesome at it and they feed off each other their chemistry is mm -hmm. really really good and it's basically them um, they pull out both of their flags the Nigerian flag and the Kenyan flag and they start kind of just battling each other and telling jokes about right. each other what can you say now ne Neka's flag wasn't even a flag right she put some towels together some, like green and white <laughs> yeah n that's true um, <laughs> that's what was I can't remember who thought about that, but I just know we thought about that. And would be fun. That would that would we thought we knew that would be funny. But yeah, Nicolette brings out a green towel and two white towels to represent the Nigerian flag, or it's supposed to be two green towels and one white towel. But we she didn't have it together, and she wraps it around her body, and that's she's supposed to represent Nigeria in towels. Whereas 
Evelyn, I mean, Tabitha has an actual Kenyan flag, so she's like ready for battle. So it's basically NECA's always not prepared. <laughs> right. And that was just so funny, right? I mean, we talked about it was like the Jollof rice against the, the samosas. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, right, it was also for those of us who may not be, now I know some Jollof rice, but learning like samosas, like I didn't realize that that was a Kenyan food. Yeah. As well. And there's just ways in which it kind of like, brings these different parts of culture to all of us and identities, right? Again, this kind of duality of being, you know, your parents from another country and you're from the United States and African American and mm -hmm. all, you know, the way identities work. And um, so will you also let us know like the names and the, I guess the actors and actresses names of, of the whole cast? I want to make sure that they. Yeah. Um, so. So um, I'll start off. Niclet Izuwebu is the writer, producer, and the starring actress of the series. And then we have uh, Evelyn from the Internet, um, who plays Tabitha. We have the twins, who um, are played by Ngazi Kim and um, Ophili. Um, Ophelia is an artist out of uh, Houston. Okay. Then we also have um, Andrew Ogale, who um, is also an, a Nigerian actor out of Houston. And um, we have Carlos. Um, Carlos O'Leary, who play, um, Carlos plays NECA's like boyfriend slash friend okay. and he's here he's an amazing actor here from Austin and um, so that's our main cast and we have a bunch of a amazing actors that we met here in Austin that have made uh, who um, they're not the main cast but they um, they are they're you know they were like a part of different episodes like Rahul Chakraborty Tamika Mitchell, Cameron Hawkins. The list goes on and on, but they're just really amazing actors that we found in Austin. All right. Well, yes, definitely want to acknowledge them and shout out to them and the work that they're doing. And it's based in Austin and Houston, correct? Yeah, it's based in Austin and Houston. Oh, one more person that helped out, too. Um, we have Chinwe Okori, who helped out with cinematography, and we have... Um, Deidre Hule, who's also an actress in the series. I'm sure I'm forgetting people, so I'm sorry. But yeah, we film in Austin and Houston's, and Houston's full of Nigerians, so it's just really cool to have like that to go back and forth. Right, and so, you know, you mentioned, so next is the second season, but you're needing us, right? Yeah. With it, so yeah, we're happen? looking for, um, we want to either do another season or a movie but um, so right now we're looking and seeking out investors so that um, because we do so that we can ha have an actual budget to produce because we a lot of what we do is like not we, we don't spend we don't have a lot of money for it. It's like out of our pockets mm -hmm. and it'd be nice to have um, an actual proper like investment and, and budget to produce like a full on movie in another se season. So we're working on that right now, meeting okay. with people. So how do people find out about, like, can watch the series uh -huh. and how, if they would like to support yeah. this, what do they need to do? So um, if you want to watch Neck of the Uber Driver, we're on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, and we have a website. Our we website is NeckaTheUberDriver.com, and NECA is spelled N-N-E-K-A. So that's N-N-E-K-A. The Uber Driver dot com. All right, and so from there they can get information. They can watch and they can support. Yeah, and you can email us or um, donate to us on Cash App, Cash App, Neck of the Uber Driver, okay. <laughs> or just email us if you're interested in like a um, actual invest investing more. Okay. Well, thank you so much for me for being here and all the work that you're doing and continuing to do. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm so um, honored to be here. So, again, this is Stephanie Lang, and until next time, bye. Bye.